Hello and welcome to She Makes News. It's Friday, May 3. I'm your host, Kimberly Finesse, and this is your weekly wrap-up for regional women in Australia. Bendigo lawyer Sarah G from Curium Legal said it's been a busy start to the year, with some clear trends emerging in the legal landscape. Sarah says there's an increasing trend of interfamily loans, highlighting how families are assisting each other in navigating the housing market and managing rising living costs. So we are doing tons of interfamily loans at the moment. And what that means is we might have parents coming to us uh, and wanting to help their kids to get into the housing market um, or help them out because they're struggling a little bit with their mortgage, with the rising cost of living. But also there's a lot of people investing in businesses at the moment. So they might be loaning money into businesses or taking on ownership of a business. Uh, So we sit with people and we talk about, you know, what happens if the lender or the borrower was to pass away? Um, What happens if they separate from their spouse? Um, We look at their estate planning. If they're lending to one child, are they balancing that out by lending to other children um, or balancing that out via their will? So, yeah, we we run through lots of uncomfortable questions and come up with a document at the end of it that reflects that loan. Businesses are still recovering from the effects of the pandemic, with many owners burnt out. This is resulting in a record number of businesses changing hands. We're not just talking about sales either. I mean, there's a large component that is sales from you know an owner to a complete third party but also things like senior employees taking on part ownership and starting to share that burden. With increasing costs and pressure on budgets Sarah says businesses are focusing on profit centres and streamlining operations to ensure survival. The economy has tightened um, and businesses who might have been carrying some extra staff or nice to have staff or underperforming staff, they just can't afford to do that anymore. Uh, So things like increases in wages, increasing costs of supplies, increasing costs of services, they're hurting budgets. Um, So we're finding a lot of businesses are really stripping back and focusing on those profit centres just to make sure they get through really. There is a rise in insolvencies across various sectors, prompting Sarah to advise businesses on tightening payment terms and monitoring credit accounts to mitigate risks associated with customer arrears. I see in the news every day construction companies are failing, hospitality and retail are doing so well, but they're actually up even in professional services and areas that you wouldn't even think about. It's hurting everybody. So what I'm recommending to people at the moment is check your payment terms with your customers. You might need to tighten them up a little bit. Check your credit accounts. So how far are you willing to let people go into arrears with you? Because it may not be your customers that have a corporate failure, so like an administration, but it could be one of their customers that puts them under pressure so then they can't pay you. Um, So just being a little bit more careful about how far you're willing to let things go. Sarah notes that there have been 12 sets of changes to the Fair Work Act recently, indicating the rapid pace of regulatory updates. I was talking to a HR professional a week ago and she was saying that it hadn't changed at all for her entire career um, and that it's changed, you know, 12 times in less than a year. Uh, So we're seeing changes to what is an employee versus a contractor, what do you have to do around casual employees, paying super to contractors, Um, sexual harassment training, because of course we've got a proactive duty to eliminate sexual harassment in workplaces now. Um, Also flexible work because we've got new rules around that and the right to disconnect coming as well. So we are working with so many businesses just trying to figure out what this means for their workplace and then planning around that. Sarah emphasises the importance of proactive legal and HR consultations to adapt to these changes. This week, Instagram announced significant changes to how it will recommend content, with a focus on original content and increased distribution for smaller accounts. Gippsland-based social media expert Erica McInerney from McInerney says Instagram plans to downrank aggregator accounts, which are profiles that primarily repost other people's content without significant modification or attribution. A few days ago, Adam Masseri, who's the head of Instagram, posted one of his little intimate chats and just casually dropped a a little bomb uh, that starting this US summer, what they call aggregator accounts, I would call content curators. So people who build their accounts by reposting other people's content, well, they're going to find their content downranked or not put forward as recommendations in feeds or in that discovery section. 
So apparently Instagram's worked out how to track creative content like right back to the first time it appeared. And if it's starting to prove popular, they, they will actually go back, find the original piece of content and promote that instead and downrank the aggregator account. The new update is to ensure that original creators receive proper recognition and benefit from their work, addressing issues where aggregators profit from others' content without proper attribution. Accounts that they are trying to cut back on, it's the accounts that just screenshot other people's content and stick it up as though it's their own. It's people who constantly reshare, reshare, reshare content and again, don't um, attribute any credit to the original poster. These accounts sometimes make quite a lot of money off this content that they didn't create and then um, the poor little person who made it doesn't get anything. There is a lot of talk about how this will impact business profiles. Erica said business owners are primarily concerned with how this will impact their reach and content creation. Particularly businesses that don't have a lot of time, ability, skills to create original content all the time. And so they may reshare from other places um, just to pad out their content. So, I mean, imagine you're like a, an accountant or something and you don't really have a lot to say. So maybe you're repurposing content from the ATO or maybe you're repurposing content from uh, other financial advisors or funny content or uh, news updates. People are worried that they're going to have to now create all of their own content themselves. And I don't think that's what's happening here. But again, I mean, I can't be 100% sure. It's very early days yet. Content creators will need to adapt to the changing landscape. Erica recommends business owners add unique elements such as stickers, voiceovers or original captions and use the remix button on Instagram Reels. If you're going to share other people's content, you need to start adding something to it that enhances no more screenshots, no more straight reposts. You you are going to have to use the remix button if you're repurposing um, an Instagram reel, for example, and add something of your own on there, some stickers, a voiceover, you know, something else. If you're going to be sharing other content, then you're going to need to create your own caption. Be clear with your content. Write your own captions. Don't copy and paste anything because uh, I imagine being algorithms, they're looking for things that have been copied directly. Erica says using keywords strategically in captions and posts is essential for visibility and discoverability on platforms like Instagram. I am making sure that everyone that I speak to understands that keywords are really important. Um, And I know we use this all the time, but consistency is very important, both consistency in the style of your language and your visual identity. Being recognisable is important. Um, We're talking about computers. We're talking about data. So if you're using language and words and creative that reinforces and makes it very clear what your message is about, what your business does, who it's for, you will uh, have a better chance of being recommended. Algorithms do not guess. So if you are vague, if you don't use many words, if your creative is a bit vague, then the algorithms won't know what you're talking about or who you're for. Meta has also recently introduced AI search, which Erica says signifies a fundamental shift in how users engage with content on social media platforms. The other enormous piece of news that's come out recently is Meta's switch to AI search and that has fundamentally changed the way that Facebook and Instagram work and the effects of that are still rolling out. So now we have this AI powered search and it's and it's very very different to what we're used to. So people are going to have to change their habits. So I think that as that gets more and more powerful and people start to understand how to use that better, that's when I think hashtags are going to become less significant because people are going to start searching the way that they do on, say, a Google or something where they're actually um, searching for phrases and ideas rather than looking for a compilation of ideas around a particular hashtag, for example. Now for some news headlines. Rural health advocate Rebecca Keeley has won this year's New South Wales ACT AgriFutures Rural Women's Award. 
Rebecca is the founder of Yarn, an innovative health platform that tackles the obstacles of geographic isolation, increasingly challenging service delivery options, and growing wait lists for speech pathology services across the country. Beef Week starts this Sunday in Rockhampton, Queensland. It's a week-long exhibition and celebration of all facets of the industry, including producers, scientists, chefs, students, exhibitors and everyone in between. The Scone Horse Festival is kicking off next Friday. This event, held in regional New South Wales, runs over 10 days and celebrates all things equine in Australia's horse capital. My hot tip is when in Scone, visit Laura Hall at Philly Hats. You'll find the most incredible custom and ready-to-wear hats. They are like a piece of art. Do It For Dolly Day is next Friday. Go blue to end bullying. You can get involved to raise funds and help make Dolly's own dream of a kinder and safer world for Australia's kids and communities a reality. Aviatrix founder Georgie Arnold has published an activities handbook to keep little flyers occupied. Haley the Helicopter's High Flying Handbook contains activities created by Georgie and illustrated by Emily Ingham Art. Georgie says she wanted her work in the aviation industry to be inclusive for all. You can now stream the movie Just a Farmer, which is written, produced and stars farmer-turned-filmmaker Layla McDougall. It's a compelling drama that authentically portrays the impact of suicide on a rural Australian family, shedding light on critical mental health issues in farming communities. Singer-songwriter Megan Woods has released a new single, Shattering the Silence. The song is about standing up for what is right. Originally from New Zealand and now based in Orange, New South Wales, Megan says the song is timely with themes shedding light on issues of domestic violence, bullying, harassment and mental health. Shattering the Silence is out now on all streaming platforms. And a save the date for September. Flourish, a women's health gathering, will be held in Grenfell, New South Wales. It's a partnership between the Collective Grenfell and its local community health service. Sign up to the Collective Grenfell newsletter to be notified when tickets are released. That's your weekly wrap-up for Regional Women. You'll find links in our show notes for anything that's been mentioned. If you'd like to hear your news, share it with us on Instagram at SheMakesNews or via email, shemakesnews at gmail.com. <laughs>